Hi, it's um, it's Editing Monty. So in my discussion of Bad Girl Reputation, which is going to follow the little regular intro, uh, I repeatedly called this man Ethan. His name is Evan. Um, so just, just know that I know, but I'm going to call him Ethan. So I also didn't give a star rating for that book because I don't know. Um, three. Sure. I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers out. I don't know if I'm gonna <laughs> if I'm gonna say that on Goodreads, but sure. For right now, for the purposes of this editing clip, three stars. Hi, it is me. I am back. And I have done quite a bit of reading today, actually. Love that for me. Um <laughs> this is going to be just like this clip that you're getting right now because it's it is all the energy that I have. Um, so you had work, had to go to work today. That was not fun. It was not pleasant. Uh, there was a large event last night. And so we are cleaning up from that large event. And not gonna lie, I was annoyed by that. So, <laughs> but it's fine. I did manage to get through Bad Girl Reputation by L. Kennedy. So let's start there. That was Genevieve and Ethan's book. So Genevieve and Ethan had like grown up together, but then Genevieve left town about a year before this book is set. And Ethan got really sad in his fifis and he just became a little whore and he was sleeping around Avalon Bay, just again, punching people and fucking people to get over the fact that his long-term, long-term feels incorrect. Um, I feel like that has implications, but his long time bestie and sometimes fuck buddy and pseudo girlfriend had bounced i have some issues mainly with uh the reasons genevieve left town so we find out pretty early on i think when i first updated you guys in the bathroom doing my skincare mm, no i hadn't read it yet i talked about this when i went to see beyonce maybe so when i updated you then i was like 30 8-ish percent in, and I want to say like 40% is when he discovered this. So if you don't want any spoilers for Bad Girl Reputation, like I guess don't watch the rest of this, but I don't know. It's a romance. Like, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like this is part of the romance that isn't like directly about them. Doesn't matter. Anyway, so a year before the story is set, I was right. The sheriff man did something foolishness. So growing up, Genevieve had babysat for the sheriff and he was, uh, she was close to his family and his wife and her and everyone around town kind of knows that he was kind of like sketchy a teensy bit and like he was definitely cheating on his wife. And so one night when Genevieve was at this little like cop bar that she felt stupid for going to, he like attempted to make a move and he definitely felt her up and he definitely attempted to kiss her. And she was like, no, fam, we're not about that. So hate that for her. Hate that she had to go through that. Do I believe that this would happen to somebody? Absolutely. What is so weird to me is that this happened in a very public space, like around other people. And yet, like, nobody in the friend group seemed to understand like that happened to her. Like, this was like a big secret. And so then after that, she went home and she was pretty shaken up about this because, like, she was assaulted in a bar like that's enough to upset anybody and she decides that she's going to go over to his house and she is going to tell his wife and uh just confront him about it and so she does that and <laughs> she is drunk because she's been partying you know or whatever so she does all of that and she's in the moment she's like feeling conflicted because his children are there and they're like small children and she's like feeling bad that like she's creating a traumatic uh memory for them and like maybe this wasn't kind of like the best situation that she should have done or like maybe this wasn't like the best way to go about what she wanted to do and so she says you know what I'm just gonna go back home so she leaves his house she goes home and later on in the story we find out that after all of that so after the bar and going to the sheriff's house and coming back home she then apparently went to Evan's house and Evan was like still drunk and hung over and asleep and it was like one o'clock in the afternoon 
And she was like, this is not what my life is going to be. I want better for myself than all of this. Like, I don't want to be this girl. Like, the, the all of these things are happening to. And so, like, that is why she left Avalon Bay. Just didn't say anything to anybody. Now, I do think it's weird that this cop could do the assault in a public place and, like, nobody kind of understood what was happening. Um, that she could make that big scene at the cop's house and, like, it never got out when this is supposed to be a small insular community. That it was, like, nobody understood, like, why she left. I thought that all of that was very strange given the setting that this book is set in. I do think that it makes sense for her to do that. I think the part that is weird for me is when she comes home, like, it makes sense because she's coming back to town because her mother is dead. So she comes back to, like, help her father uh, get the business in order because he has a business and he's her dad is going to sell the house, so she's going to be around for that. And uh, then she's going to go back to where she was. She ultimately decides to stay in Avalon Bay because of a job opportunity that she seeks out, which, fair enough, because the job she had, she left. Uh, she got fired. Mm. She was asking for some time off, but they were like, no, fam, we can't just give you months off from work. Um, no. <laughs> and her dad wasn't, she didn't want to work for her dad for forever. So ultimately, she was at some point going to be without a job. And so I guess it did make sense for her to, like, find a job in Avalon Bay. But the part that I thought was a little bit weird was her taking back Ethan. I don't know. Like, it's not that I thought that they didn't have any kind of chemistry together or that, like, he was, like, this horrible person. Because I really don't think he was a horrible person. I think that he was just, like, that's who he was at that point in his life. And then, the, to L. Kennedy's credit, like, these are dual perspective romances. They're not dual perspective romances in a way that I necessarily like. Like, I don't really like getting her, her male protagonist's point of view, but I appreciate the effort. And so we do kind of see him attempting to like better himself and like figure out what it is that he wants out of life and how he is going to go about being the person that at least, even if I don't think he's the right person for Jenny, that she thinks that he's the right person for her. So I did appreciate that and it did give us a side character Riley who was like a teenager in the town and like he becomes the big brother to like the big brother's uh, big sister's program or whatever and like that was cute and I appreciated getting to see him in scenes with that I did he also has like a storyline with his own family that's happening because he and his mother are estranged for a variety of reasons some of which I think happened in the first book, like, I think the robbery happened in the first book where she, like, stole their life savings from, but also, like, you keep, <laughs> maybe this is just me, like, maybe I just trust the bank a little bit too much, but I don't understand people talking about, yeah, we had, like, thousands of dollars and a cookie jar on top of the fridge, like, it's very wild to me, put in the bank, you're not, like, your mom is not coming to steal your money for money's in the bank, like, it's just not gonna happen, no one's stealing the money from under your mattress, so there's no money in the mattress to steal, maybe that's just me. So we get to see him reconnecting with his mother. I think the part of the story that was also just like a little bit of a disconnect is uh, he and his twin brother have some, you know, they're not seeing eye to eye a lot during this narrative, which is fine. But I, I don't know. I, I just feel like when you, ha it's one thing to do, uh, a, you know, a series of pseudo connected standalones where they're, you know, companions to one another and people from the books don't necessarily cross over like that's fine like the third book in the series that i'm reading right now i think it's the good girl complex because i'm in my l kennedy era apparently um no the summer girl and so the summer girl is like a friend of the twins and so the twins are kind of factoring in like he occasionally meets up with them for dinner or for lunch or to hang out and they're at a party and like they're just in the periphery or whatever but ethan and connor live together uh, Mackenzie lives with Connor, which is the love interest from the first book. Like, it, I just felt like there wasn't enough interaction, which again is wild when one of the people is your twin brother. Like, of all the people to interact with, I think in a story, your twin is pretty high up on the list. So, that was a little bit bothersome for me was that Ethan and Connor didn't have a lot of moments together, and it it was kind of sad that, like all the moments they did have were them just like go butting heads. So I didn't really get like the nice, fun sibling feels that I typically enjoy. So I finished that and I was still at work and I was still annoyed. And <laughs> partially because, um, I don't know, I, I was just, 
I got to work thinking it was going to be like a nice, easy day. And then I was there and it wasn't complicated. Like my job is not complicated. People have far more stressful jobs than I have, but I was just like, actually, I don't want to be here today. <laughs> actually, I'm ready to be done. And now I am. And I get to just lay in bed and sleep in tomorrow. I think I'm finally going to finish my rewatch of Winter Soldier because I started watching that the other night. And then I said, it's like midnight. I got to go to sleep. But that's a tangent. The <laughs> the real. For the setting, like I like the community aspect of Avalon Bay. I like how everyone is either like a business owner or connected to a business owner because the town is so small and it just, I don't know. I just like it. I like it. It's again, it's not like the best writing in the world and the characters themselves do leave a lot to be desired. But I think of the three, this is again, going back to one of the things I like. I appreciate friends to lovers, which is what book two was, but I appreciate what I appreciate the most is strangers to lovers, which is what book one in this series was, which might be the good girl complex. Maybe that's a completely different book. I'm too lazy to look it up. Um, but that was the strangers to lovers because Mackenzie was new. She was like coming to the Bay for the first time. She was a college student, uh, and she was meeting Connor and getting off on the raw. I think Bay, but she left and now she lives in Boston because her parents are divorced. Her dad still lives in Avalon Bay and so does her grandmother and she's another wealthy character. So Genevieve and Ethan were both like working class people and in this third book we're going back to like rich girl working class boy and so she's in the summer the summer she's in the bay for the summer to be with her grandmother and to visit her father and her twin sisters who he had after uh Cassandra and her dad, her parents, they divorced. So he has a new wife. I think his wife is supposed to be black. I think they're described as like being from Haiti, his, the wife. But the narrator just says like this stereotypical French accent. And so maybe it's just like some random white French lady decides she's going to live in Haiti. But I think, I think her, she's black. I'm going to, in my head, she's black and she has these little black racial twin sisters and they all share a birthday which of course they do because it's a book and so it's like cute or whatever um but cassandra meets tate because she was on the beach and tate was getting broken up with and she was happened to be in the area but they have another connection in that tate is house sitting for cassandra's grandmother's neighbor so like the house next door like the nice little mansion across the way he is taking care of that and like looking after their sailboats because he's a sailor man he teaches sailing at the little country club or whatever so that's his gig he's sticking to it it's real cute he's also something of a player something of a little whore himself so we love that but these two people had never crossed paths before this uh event and so going into the summer cassandra wanted to be in a fling she wanted somebody that she was going to have like no strings attached you know situationship with before she had to go back to boston for college in the fall and so we we see them and they there's an initial attraction and then what we get is them deciding that what is going to happen is Tate is going to be Cassandra's wingman because maybe it wouldn't be a good idea for them to be in a fling because she is trying to swipe her V card and he is again a whore. And so he doesn't know if like he can be with her. Like if, if it, he just thinks that like maybe it'd get too messy and it'd be better for both of them if they just didn't do that obviously it's a romance novel and these are the perspectives so like at some point these two people are going to get over and they're going to be together and it's going to be cute but i like it because it's strangers then they're they're forming a friendship and where i'm at now at 55 percent the lovers is on the way so there's been a series of like you know popcorny fun moments i do think that l kennedy at least in this book and kind of in the other book um i do think that there is just a lot of sex in these books <laughs> Um, there's a lot of sex. Um, it's for me personally, it doesn't take away from anything, particularly in the last two where Genevieve and Ethan's former relationship, they're on again, off, like on again, off again, pseudo girlfriend, whatever ship was always premised on the fact that like they had a very physical connection with one another. So like them, 
you know, saying they were going to stay away from each other and then they were fucking and then they were going to stay away from each other. It worked. And this one, it's working because it's just working. It's, it, it is giving like a little bit tropey. It's giving a little bit like this could only happen in a romance novel, but I'm accepting it. I'm allowing it to do what it wants to do. And so I am for now allowing what is happening in this book. And I do like the fact that both of these characters have like other things going on. Cassandra has a mom issues that she is dealing with. She has a very controlling mother. Um, that's all I'm going to, I'm going to say controlling. I think that there's like some other, like maybe pseudo abusive tactics happening. She has some issues with her stepmother. She feels like her stepmother doesn't really like her, but she's like really in love with her, you know, little sisters. And so I, the scenes with her little sisters are some of my favorite scenes in the entire book. Just, I like family moments. Um, and then Tate, he actually gets along with his parents. So I'm happy that not everybody in this book is like hating on their parents. I feel like that was something that was happening for a minute there when the Hannah Grace, like everyone was just having bad parents. Um, so in the L Kennedy books, at least somebody who's just like a good parent and their love interest has like a more contentious relationship. But he is, you know, working really hard over the summer. His aspiration is to like buy a boat. He really wants a boat because he's again, Mr. Sailor Man. And they're, he was just having a conversation with the people that he's house sitting for, and it might provide him with a job opportunity that would allow him to put money down on a boat of his own and a pretty decent boat. I'm not a boat person, so like I'm just taking his word for it. But it is going to clash with some prearranged things that he had going on with his own parents. But because of the relationship that they have, I feel like his parents are going to be very understanding of that and being like, we know that you would really love to do this, son. And they're going to do, they're going to let him go off and like take this job opportunity. I don't think it's going to be like a problem problem. And I also don't think that this whole like we're not going to fuck is going to be a problem for much longer because. Is an advocate of the condom use. Everyone's using condoms. She's not Allie Hazelwood. No one is getting, you know, split up and stuffed like a fucking Boston cream donut. But other than that, um, I don't have anything to say. I did not anticipate going on this like L. Kennedy era situation, but I'm also not super upset about it. So that has been my day. I'll be back again tomorrow with final thoughts on the summer girl. And hopefully something else. I'm probably going to try and read something physically. And even if physically is just on my Kindle. I do have sprints with my patrons tomorrow. So that should help me read something on the Kindle. Um, and hopefully something that isn't romance. I don't know what yet. But maybe it also won't be a romance. I'll take like a brief pit stop away from that. But I'll see you guys then. We'll talk. And uh, until then. And until next time.